Hey guys, want to build a robot? Welcome back guys. This video is a part of our series all about the new Rover. In this video, we're going to be covering chapter 5, pairing the PS3 controller with your Rover Robotics Kit. The ESP32 that acts as the brain of the Rover has a bunch of wireless communication methods built in. It's got built-in Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, ESP Now, and so because of that, there are tons of options in terms of wirelessly controlling the Rover Robotics Kit. Now, in this video, we're going to focus on the PS3 controller, as that uses Bluetooth, and it's super easy to get connected to the Rover. In this video, we'll talk about how to pair a PS3 controller to the Rover Robotics Kit, as well as how to use the data from the controller to wirelessly control the Rover. Let's check it out. All right, so we're gonna start off with project seven, getting the joystick data from our PS3 controller. We'll get the data and then we'll put in the motor driver code so that way we can control the motors with the controller. Now this first example is actually pretty simple. All we're doing is trying to get the joystick data and I'll get into what all these lines of code mean in one second. But before I do, I wanted to talk about the PS3 controller library. Now, as I'm sure you guys know, the PS3 controller has tons of buttons. It has the D-pad, A, B, X, Y, the joysticks. You can click the joysticks. It has the left and right uh, bumpers. There's tons of options, and we're not going to use all of them initially. But that doesn't mean that you can't for future projects. And so the first thing we want to do is actually install the PS3 controller library. And we're going to do that the exact same way we have our other library files. Head on over to the Sketch tab, Include Library, Add.zip Library, and head to the USB drive that came with your kit. Once you've got that opened up, head to the Arduino Libraries folder and let's install the ESP32 PS3 master library file. Again, I already have this guy installed, so you won't see this message. You'll see a message saying that the library was added successfully. Now, once you've done that, I want to show you something kind of cool. Now, most library files have what are called examples. And so if you head to the examples tab, you can actually find all the libraries that you've installed. Now, obviously I have a million library files installed here, but if you head over to PS3 controller host, this is where we can actually get the data from the PS3 controller. This is where the library holds its example files. And so if you go over to demo and data notify, you can actually get a ton of other examples about how to use the different buttons. Um, this actually shows you how to use the accelerometer inside of the controller, which is awesome. And so if you're looking for more resources after you get this first code working, I would definitely head here. So if we look at this code, the first thing we do is call the PS3 controller library, which we just installed. Next, we have four variables, RX, RY, LX, and LY. Now, as I'm sure you guys know, joysticks move in both the forward, backward, and left and right direction, right? You can go diagonally, forward, backward, you can go a little bit, a lot. Joysticks are awesome. And so generally speaking, we refer to forward and backward and left and right as X and Y. And so the whole goal of this code is to take the X and Y data of both the right and the left joystick. And so we create these variables RX, RY for the right joystick and LX, LY for the left joystick. All right, now in the void setup, we have some new information, some stuff that we haven't seen before. Now, if you've been programming for a long time, I'm sure you know what the serial monitor is, but if you don't, you're about to see a really awesome tool. So this first line of code, serial.begin, this starts up the serial monitor. And the serial monitor is a way to see what the Arduino is thinking. It can print data for us that would otherwise be invisible. So whenever we pair the controller, we can open up the serial monitor to actually see that button data. Next, we have this line of code that actually connects to our PS3 controller. And now this series of numbers is what's known as the MAC address. Now MAC addresses are very common within Bluetooth. It's how, it's how your computer knows that you've connected to your headphones before. It's, it's a signature for all Bluetooth devices. And so in this case, if you got a PS3 controller from us, we automatically set the MAC address of each PS3 controller to this code. So what's nice is you don't have to do anything. Now, again, if you wanted to change this code, and you want to change the MAC address so you can have more than one PlayStation controller working at one time, it's super, super easy. And so we have other guides that'll be listed in the description of this video that show you how to change that MAC address and how to uh, customize it so you can have more than one controller working at one time. Next, we print out a simple message out of the serial monitor, which again, we'll show you in a second, that says, ready. This just lets us know that in fact, the PS3 controller was successfully connected to our rover. 
Next, in the void loop, we have our first conditional statement. So this condition is if the PS3 dot is connected, therefore we've connected to our controller, I want you to take the data from the analog sticks. So the uh, PS3 dot data analog stick, this is, this is basically just taking in the data from the controller. So it's taking in the data from the controller and it is storing it in those variables that we created at the top of the code. Once we have that data collected, all we need to do is print it back in the serial monitor. So this code is super, super simple. All we're doing really is establishing communication in the void setup, storing the data from the joysticks and printing that data back to us. And we'll see in a second that it's super, super easy to use that data to control your robot. Okay, so feel free to grab this code from the book or your flash drive or copy it down right here whenever you have that done. Let's go ahead and upload that to our rover and we'll see if we can get our controller connected. To pair the PS3 controller with the rover, simply press the button in the center of the controller. Once you do that, you'll see four blinking lights. Once you have one solid red LED, you're paired and ready to go. Once you have the controller paired, open up the serial monitor in Arduino, and you should see the data from the joysticks being printed in the serial monitor. That's how you know everything's working, and we're ready to move on to adding the motor driver code. All right, so now that we know we have the ability to pair our controller and we can get our joystick data, it's time to put in all of the code from our previous lessons into one example. So don't let the length of this file fool you. You know, it might look super, super complicated because we've never seen code this long, but really all we're doing is connecting everything we've learned so far. We're gonna put in the lights, we're gonna put the motor driver code back in, and then we're gonna use the joystick data to control our robot. So first things first, let's look at the area above the void setup. We have some variables and we have some other things that we need from our library files. So obviously we still need the PS3 controller library. This library file is what we used to create the PWM signal for our motor drivers. And this was the library that we needed for our lights. And so the light code right here, these other three lines, these are the exact same, right? We're still using pin 18 because that's what it is on the circuit board. We still have four of them and we still need to set up our lights in the exact same way. Next, we have our motor driver variables as well as our joystick variables. Now, these lower variables right here, we remember from the last example, and these are the exact same variables that we used when we started to mess with our motor drivers. Now, the void setup is also stuff we have seen before. If you remember, we need to set up our PWM channels just like we did before. We have to set up our uh, LEDs the exact same way, and we need to connect our PS3 controller. Now, where things start to get different is inside of the void loop. Now, we're gonna use a few more conditional statements here, and this is where it gets really, really cool. So, the first condition is if ps3 dot is connected. And so, all of this code you see here will only run once we have connected the controller. And so, what's so cool about that is we have these lights right here. So, just, just an example, you know, this is the exact same from the last example. All it's doing is taking in the analog stick data, the joystick data, and storing it in these variables for us. It then prints it out. So, you've seen that in the last example. And so, all we did here was we added in some code to control the lights. So, that way, whenever we connect the controller, we see this combination of blue green light letting us know that we're connected. Now, what's so awesome here is you can put whatever you want. You could put an animation, you could change the colors. You know, we just think it's helpful to have some kind of light here to let you know you've connected, but you don't even have to put this if you don't want to. We just thought it was kind of a cool feature. Now, if we work our way down, we see a whole bunch of conditional statements. If LY is uh, less than negative five, if LY is greater than five, if LX is less than negative five. And so the reason we have these conditional statements here is we wanna know whenever the controller is moved, right? Whenever the joystick is moved. And so we get the value of zero, zero, if the joystick is left alone. Therefore, if it goes less than negative five or greater than five, we know that the joystick has been moved in a specific direction. And so if you upload this code and uh, connect the controller and open up the serial monitor, you'll see that the joysticks give you a value of negative 127 to positive 127. And so what's awesome is that's actually pretty useful for us. And so whenever we go less than negative five or greater than five, then we start collecting the number. And so all we've done is that we take the number, whatever the joystick is from zero to 127, and then we add 127 to it. 
So therefore, if you move the joystick forward, automatically it starts going at half speed. But if you move the joystick all the way forward, it goes to full speed because all the way forward would be 127 plus 127 would give us 255. And so, and so this is a really easy way to make the motor driver react to how far we push the controller. So therefore, if you push the controller forward just a little bit, the robot will crawl. But if you push the joystick all the way forward, the robot will move super fast. And so it's really awesome. You know, that's one of the benefits of the joystick that allows you to do that. And so all we've doing the rest of the code here is setting that up for our other axes, right? So we have forward, backward, left, and right. And so all we do is we take the joystick data and then instead of just reading the joystick data, we send that data to our motor drivers and we start to drive our motors. The only thing we have left is setting 000, 000, 000 on our other conditions. So if you're not connected, keep it off. If you don't see anything from the joystick, keep it off. And this is just safety stuff. So, so really, even though this code looks way longer, you see that it's made up of everything we've seen before. And what's cool is you can take this so, so, so much further. Um, you know, you could add in the other buttons, you could add in the other joystick to do stuff, you could add in sensor data, there's really no limit. But this is pretty much the basic way to control the, the uh, speed and direction of your robot using the controller. So if you'd like, you can either copy the code from the ebook or grab it from the flash drive that came with your kit. And once you have it already, go ahead and upload it to your rover. Once you have the code uploaded, you should be able to connect the controller to your rover, drive around, and have fun. Now keep in mind, you know, this is the end of the chapter here, but again, there's so much cool stuff you can do with this. And so uh, keep your eye out to acbr.com for more examples of fun stuff you can do with the rover. And thank you so much for watching, guys.